the neighborhood trolley, one cannot help but think of Fred Rogers. You know who he was, right? Fred was an amazing maker, accomplished TV star, musician, author, puppeteer, and an expert in childhood development. He welcomed us into his TV living room singing, It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, all while changing into his blue sneakers and hand-knit cardigan sweater. Fred would take his audience on fun field trips and into the neighborhood of make-believe. I wonder what he would think if he saw the trolley ride on the track surrounded by yarn, needles, and beads. I'm pretty sure that Fred might have liked to see where the trolley was going. This program was inspired by his beautiful sweaters that his mom knit. Fred Rogers sweaters were knitted by hand by his mom. Most sweaters that are made by hand probably are knitted. After all, they are just knitted with yarn, but you can also crochet with yarn and you can also weave with yarn. Either way, knitting, crochet, weaving, it all equals some kind of fabric that you're putting together. I used a tabletop loom like you'd be able to use in the forge using this thread and this yarn, pardon me, both of them are yarn, neither of these would be thread. I made that on this tabletop loom. I made this one also on a tabletop loom like this. But you know, again, we're in a situation that you're not in the forge to be able to borrow a loom to learn how to do this. So while I'm at home and you're at home, I wanna show you how you can make one of these looms using cardboard. If you had a large piece of cardboard this size, you'd be able to make this type of textile here. If you made many of these, you could join them together, maybe make a scarf like this, or a table runner, or even maybe patchworked as a table placemat. But if you don't have cardboard this large, and it's kind of hard to learn sometimes on cardboard because it does bend, this is not flexible. This holds your warp thread perfectly. It's much easier. I used this small loom and embroidery floss to weave this simple woven necklace. I added some beads for embellishment and an even smaller loom to weave this piece using embroidery floss where it sits on a bar necklace. So let me show you how to make a cardboard loom so you can learn the basics of weaving. You can create whatever you would like, a necklace, a mug rug, a wall hanging, a scarf, or table runner. Use your imagination. Fred would have really loved it. To make a cardboard loom, you need four items. A piece of corrugated cardboard, a ruler, a pen, and some scissors. Take your ruler along the bottom edge of the loom that you're going to be making cardboard piece and mark every quarter inch until you reach the end of the loom. Do the same thing along the top. I've made the same markings at the top of the loom. So now the top and the bottom loom both have these markings. You want to make certain that they line up though. So I kind of checked along the way to make sure my lines went from the top to the bottom. So now you can cut slots. I suggest leaving the first and the last do not cut those so you have a little bit of border to be able to work on. So I'm going to cut slots just a little bit. Not, I mean, no more than a half of inches needed. Again, you wanna go all the way up and cut all of these slots, all the way till you reach the end. Sharp scissors can be helpful here. So now I cut all the way to roughly the same line, and I'll repeat this on the other side of the loom. In addition to the cardboard loom that we made, you will need the following supplies to warp the loom so we can begin our weave. You'll need yarn or floss, some scissors, tape, a needle. I have a plastic one as well as a standard metal sewing needle and a weaving comb. If you don't have a little pick like this, that's okay. Go ahead and use just a regular comb and if you can, a fork. All you basically need is to be able to push the yarn down on the loom. Let's warp our loom. 
I'm going to begin this with this light colored yarn. I like to grab what I call a tail. I make that be about the length that, of the loom that I've just made, a couple of inches to have in your hand. This is what I call the tail. Then I'm going to hold this off to the side and start at the top of the loom. In that first slit that we made across the top, I insert the string there. I extend the string, excuse me, that would be yarn, down the length of the cardboard to the bottom slit, the corresponding slit at the bottom. First slit here, first slit there. And then I go up the back, ensuring that this little tail is out of the way. I do the same, the second slit down into the second slit at the bottom. I'm going to flip my board over so you can see. It looks just like that. Now the third at the top to the third at the bottom. Just like that. I'm going to continue going across the distance here or however long I want this to be. If I'm making a little jewelry piece, I might not want it to be this wide. It's up to you, depending on what you're going to make. Or perhaps you're making a bigger loom and it's even further. I'm going to progress just so we save some time and I will show you what the next part looks like. So here I've used the same yarn and I've inserted the string at the top and the bottom all the way across, noting that they kind of are about the same height at the top within the, the depth of the board. Looks pretty okay. This is the back, looks pretty excellent, but I have to take these two tails and I wanna tie the two tails in the middle on an angle and just grab a couple pieces of tape, masking, scotch, whatever you have is okay painting tape, whatever. You just want them out of the way. And now, officially, this is warped. The key here is that there's not a lot of excess space. There's very little slack, but you need a little bit because we have to get underneath these. But it's not fully tight where it's bending the cardboard. Cardboard can be challenging. It can buckle. But I used brand new cardboard. I found when I make multiple pieces, the cardboard starts to bend and it is not as easy to weave upon. But this is a brand new piece of cardboard and um, it will serve very, very nicely. So this is how we are going to begin and then we get to do the fun part with some color. So I have chosen this fun, rusty orange color to start. And you have a couple choices now where you would like to start this. You can tie a knot on the first string if you would like, but you would have a, a knot that would be visible on the outside. You can choose a string internally to hide your knot within your weaving if you choose so. Um, choose to do so. Just a personal preference. The outside might be easier, but the inside you can hide the knot. So um, just a personal choice. I will take you from the tougher of the two. I'm just going to start in one of the ones on the inside. I'm going to grab a little needle to help me here. The beginning's the hardest. So you feed that underneath this warped string, your colored thread, or whatever thread you're going to go up the loom and tie a simple knot. I, if you can, make this as small as possible. You don't want your knot to be bigger than the material or else you'll really, really see it. Okay. So you're left with this little tail piece and you would definitely want to weave this little tail piece into your piece. So weaving is over, under, over, under, over, under. So right now you can see that this yarn is lying over this next string. The knot is here, it is lying over. But we're gonna take this first one and we're going to just feed it. I like to feed it with my fingers, but I will use this needle to pick it up. It makes it a little bit easier. I'm gonna place this string under this and then it would go over this string. Then I want to tuck it back in to this weaving to hide it. So it's going to go under this first string, over the second, under the third, over the fourth, under until eventually this will end. Now I do not like this little fraying piece here at the end. I'm just going to snip it, but do not cut your warp strings or you're going to start all over. 
And we'll just get rid of that little piece. I didn't even do it a little bit more because I pulled. That'll happen. The beginning is the hardest. It's fun after this, I promise. There we go. Much better. Much better. Okay, so that's in there. And I'm going to use my little pick just to push those two together just to start to make it kind of look almost like one string. So for this tutorial, I am just going to take out just a little bit of this yarn just to show you. I'm going to cut a little bit there just for this example, and I'm going to feed the other side through the needle. Again, that word tail, I like to have a little tail piece in my hand, a little bit extra. So now we tucked the end from the knot, and I'm going to keep going this way across the um, loom. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to go under, over, under, over. It's tight the first time. Under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. I hope you can see that. And then I'm going to gently pull this through. Okay, a couple important tips here at the beginning. So I'm going to use my pick or fork or comb, whatever you have, to make certain this is a straight line. And very importantly, that these warp threads remain perpendicular um, and parallel to each other. So perpendicular to this and parallel to each other. You don't want any kind of bending. You don't want your weave to kind of go in. It happens with the tension. So I'm noticing it's a little bit tight here in the beginning. So I'm just going to pull that back. Try to keeping the line straight. It's probably the sign of a great weaver of how awesome their lines end up being. But so now we've made one run across. The tail is tucked. It's a great day. Now we need to take this and go back this way through the piece. So we landed up going over this at the end. So we need to start going under. So under, over, 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 all the way to the end. Again, every other string and you pull it gently through. And I just untuck that first piece. I don't know if everybody saw that, but we'll have to tuck it back into the weave. That's not a problem. There we go. But I'm going to go while I'm in rhythm here. Okay. So I ended up this, this yarn is underneath this, which means I have to start by going over. So over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, like this. It does start to loosen, believe it or not. But in the beginning, it's a little tight. You have to be patient in the beginning because it will get all tangled. You can use smaller pieces, different colors, etc. But be prepared, you're going to have to tie a lot of knots. In the beginning, I like to use bigger sections so I can just practice the technique of over, under, over, under and making certain my warp threads, threads stay up and down and perfectly distanced between. So it's kind of a pretty little basket weaving like this. And again, this is a little problematic. You could probably make a choice here if you wanted. You might be able just to, if you're a good tire, you could probably knot it at the end or you can feed it back through, which is what I'm going to do. Just tuck it back in with a needle. And I'm actually going to tuck it to the back of the weave. Like that. It's sticking up straight. When I go back through, we will tuck that in. It'll stay behind. Okay, so this one ended going over. So under, over, all the way across. And rhythm. You kind of get in the groove once you get going with this. Make sure you go over that little piece we're trying to hide. And pull it through. Hold that little tail down so it doesn't pop out.
And here, a perfect example, it gets jammed a little bit sometimes. If you don't have a pick or a fork or anything, you can use your fingers, but I like, if you can get a tool, it really makes for a nice tight weave. It looks really, really great. And this, we just pulled it straight up. Eventually, the thread will all knock it, or the yarn, floss, whatever, will all lock that in place. So, that's kind of the concept. If I wanted to maybe change um, a color, you would then just knot it out and put another color in, or whatever you would like to do. So I went a little further with my next piece here. I just want to show you. And I did just that. This was that same back and forth, back and forth, under, over, under, over stitch. And then I decided to change it up a little bit, and I went every two. So there's a little bit of a different pattern. And then I chose another color. I could do a repeating pattern, whatever, um, whatever you'd like to do. I just wanted to show you that you could change colors within. So let's say that I want this to be done, and I want to show you how to get this thing off. There's a couple little um, tails, as I've pointed out, that did not get woven in, or they popped out while I was weaving. I intentionally left them to show you how to fix these, because it might inevitably happen. So all you need to do to get this off of the loom, turn it over and remove your little scotch tape pieces or whatever tape you used, and you get to cut these threads. When I first did this, I was afraid that the whole thing was gonna fall apart, but they won't. So I kind of cut it you know, somewhere towards the middle, whatever. Depends if I want tassels on either side or whatever, and flip it over. So the key here is to count the number of slots that you made. So in this case, I believe I have 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I can either tie by threes five times, so I would end up with five knots holding each of the three strings, or I could do a pattern. I could tie two and then tie three, two, three, two, three, whatever. Um, and you would end up then using all 15 pieces that way. But I'm gonna do the simple one of just grouping them in three. So you gently pull the first one off, which was actually that tail, the second and the third. And then you can tie it together how you'd like. If you work in even, sometimes it's easier because you're only tying two together. And this is a couple different lengths. It can be problematic, but you know, use the tools that you have. So I'm just gonna group it in a little knot like that and pull it through, holding the knot piece here. I think I might have it. I see all three of my little pieces there. That's great. I'm gonna knot it tight. Don't worry that I made that little mess. We will be able to correct that. I can even go tighter if I had to. It's okay. Just for an example to show you. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to pull out the next three pieces. I'm actually going to pull the whole thing off the loom. My This is the first time I'm using this loom. It's pretty tight. Now I have to kind of push this up so this line is straight. So the next three, put those together. Do the same thing. Just tie it. Okay. So you kind of get the gist. You'll end up with fringe at the bottom. So I finished tying along the bottom, but I wanted to do something different at the top just to show you a variety. I could do the same technique and have fringe on both sides, but I thought, what if somebody wanted to do this as a wall hanging? This is one, if you were to have an even amount of strings, it'd be simple that you would just be able to tie two together. But because I had 15, I'm mathematically going to group them in two, three, two, three, two, three order. So I'm going to do the same concept of feeding the dowel through by going one over, one under, next one over, next one under, etc. Over, under, over, under, all the way to the end. So it's um, in and out, just like the weave, to be able to attach it to this little dowel. But because I only have 15 strings, I need to tie the first three together. So this is going to be three. Check it first before you tie, then two, and then the next three will be tied, and the next two, the next three, and then ending with two. So that'll be pretty, pretty great. So I'm gonna use tape dispenser here as another set of hands, and I'm simply going to do my best to tie this. 
double knot across the top. Okay, so I have it hanging on the dowel here with the little knots at the top. You can do whatever you would like to do, but the only thing I wanted to show you was these little problem strings, which may happen with the first couple of weaves that you do. As I mentioned, I left these in here deliberately to show you. So we need to fix them. Most people are probably not going to look at the back of your weaving. However, this little cardboard loom did a pretty great job, didn't it? It looks pretty great from the back as it does from the front. Pretty excellent. But we are going to hide this within these little strands here. So I'm just going to pick this up and shove it through. So just hide the yarn within the back of the woven piece. I chose the same color. I have one more here. If you're challenged by tucking the yarn, you can simply knot it close to the edge, tightly. and snip off the excess. And there you go. Now that you know the basics of weaving, you can challenge yourself to make something more intricate, like this bookmark in honor of Mr. Rogers.